Hey guys, I have Hannah Johns here. She is an awesome director of marketing at uh, Marketing 360 and Madwire, leads a team, has led a team for quite a while. And I have her on today to talk about just some tips on how you can lead your teams and keep a positive mindset through these challenging times. So welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So Hannah, what's your tips on leading the team and keeping them positive? Yeah, I think, you know, the biggest thing to focus on is just everything good that is happening around us. One thing that I really try and get my team to focus on is just how now more than ever, we're just a stronger community. So focusing on how like everything is bringing everyone closer together and we're all able to collaborate, support and be there for one another through all these challenging times. Oh, that's awesome. Um, so how is your team responding so far? Obviously, there's been a lot of curveballs for anybody in business. Um, how are you guys mm -hmm. navigating it? We're navigating it well. I mean, you know, I think it's a lot to take in. It's a lot to handle. It's a lot to adjust to. But I think once you actually get into some sort of routine and you find the little, you know, positivity things that make you happy, the little triggers that make you really positive and happy, those things really help motivate you and get you through those tough times. So I have my team focusing on like little joy triggers and things along those lines that make them focus on everything good that's in their life so they can get through all of the challenging times with those little things that bring them positivity. That's awesome. So what are some ways that you're doing that? Are you doing um, like team meetings or one-on-ones mm -hmm. or emails or what are some ideas that small businesses can take advantage of right now um, as yeah. they're leading their teams that they can do maybe on a daily basis or weekly basis to keep, uh, keep the vibes going? Yeah, I think communication is key. So I really try and reach out via email, Zoom calls, really encourage everybody to be on video. So if you have a team of people who you don't see in person, I would highly recommend getting them on Zoom video calls just to see their faces. I think that the human element of like seeing somebody and looking them in the eyes is so important still. So we do a lot of, you know, collaborations on video. Um, I send little handwritten cards to them too. So we have coffee dates together. I sent them little gift cards for coffee and we have coffee dates together even though we're all remote. So it's still like we're together, but you know, we're, we're trying to make little things happen where we still feel like we're one big team, even though we're all remote. That's huge. How do you, how do you set the expectations with your team? Maybe when you bring a new team member in just to, you know, welcome them to the culture, but also set the expectation of the type of attitude and everything that you want to have within the team. Do you have any, any tips on that? Yeah, I think the biggest thing that I focus on is hard work and progress and not perfection. So you don't have to come into this position and be perfect. You don't have to come into this and know everything all at once. If you focus on the progress and getting better and focusing on, you know, failing forward and not necessarily just like making the same mistake over and over again, that's what's going to get you to that point where you're successful. So focusing on the little wins along the way and really just focusing on how can I get better? How can I fail forward? No, oh, that's great. How do you, you're just making me think, you know, that's a good expectation in the beginning, but then people are going to fail. They are going to uh -huh. have issues here and there, and then you're going to have to be able to try to coach them and give them that feedback. So what are some tips that you have to be able to have that open candor essentially, but keep it in a positive way so that yeah. you have open, honest communication and everything. Um, there's no gray area there, but also it doesn't turn into a negative thing. Any tips on that? Yeah, I use a lot of my personal examples when I'm coaching because I've been through it. And so I want them to know that when they're going through those tough times, they're not alone. Somebody else is, has been through it. Somebody else has experienced it. So just talking to my personal experience or even the veterans on my team, just to remind them that they're not alone. They're going through this with somebody else and that they have our support through that process. Um, I think that's the biggest thing is just reminding them that we've all been there and we've all, we've all made mistakes and it doesn't matter how many mistakes you make. It, it matters how you respond to those mistakes and how you get better from that mistake. Awesome. Well, I know from experience, you know, it all, it all starts with the leader, you know, the leader's yeah. mindset. If the leader's positive and navigating through the challenging times in a positive way, then the team generally will too. So great job on your part, you know, just coming from the core within you, it's radiating out and it's a super positive, you know, thing that's actually pretty contagious within the team. So nice job. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, um, you know, at the end of the day, I, I love leading. I love growing and inspiring and coaching people. That's my passion. So the, the more that I can do that, the better. And I just want everybody to, you know, find happiness and passion in everything that they do every single day. 100%. 
All right, Hannah, I really appreciate the tips today. Thanks. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me.